Hello Unit Trust Agents, this is Joe Wall with Insurance Toolkits. I'm one of the co-founders of the software. Uh, today we're going to be showing a quick overview of the different features and how you can best use it uh, to help you and your business. So first thing we're going to do is hop over to settings. So in the settings, uh, there's individual settings pages for both final expense and for term. Uh, we're going to stick on uh, final expense for most of this video. So in the effects settings, you have your light link. This is your personal link. You don't have to log in to use it. Anyone with the URL can run a basic quote. You can share it around, bookmark it on your phone if you don't want to use the mobile app, um, whatever you want to do. So you can see there's no underwriting here, but you can run a basic quote. Uh, for the uh, widget here, if you have a website, you can put it on there and generate TCPA compliant leads if you choose to do so. If we head back over to the quoter, you can see here that you can run uh, quotes with the client's information on the left and then the underwriting information on the right. Before we do that though, uh, just make sure well, the first thing you do when you log on is if you're a telesales agent, turn this on and if uh, whatever your default state is, if you, I guess, sell face to face, it uh, just makes it a little bit easier to run quotes. So you can do that there as well. So heading back over to FEX. So a few different things with the quoter here, uh, but first we're going to run a graded modified quote. So. 15 and just as an aside uh, in this video we're only going to be looking at the website now for the mobile app that's designed for your iPhone or Android if you have an iPad make sure you use the website um, the app is just a slightly watered down version of the um, website version of the software but we're gonna run this quote here Oop. hop in say 55 so when we have our companies here you can see that we order them in buckets so we always show in this case um, everything is graded but We'll always show day one coverage first, followed by graded, modified, and guaranteed. Uh, in this case, it looks like Moo is our lowest cost option. And there's a few different features of the tiles that you can take a look at. So we have the social security billing stars here. So if they have true social security billing, meaning they take the money out at 2, 3 a.m. first third or Wednesday, uh, we'll show them with a star. If there's a commission cut, you know, different products have different cuts, make sure you know your contract, but uh, the variance can be pretty great, so you can see with Moo graded, there's up to a 40% cut, uh, American Amicable, 15%. Now, a lot of these plans, too, have different parameters for what they cover, so you can see Moo graded is actually a modified plan, whereas American Amicable Senior Choice graded is a true graded, 30, 70, 100. So it's always important to take a look at what the plans are actually covering so that you know what you're presenting to your client. You can see Transamerica graded here is also another modified plan, so it's important not to go by the name and go by what is actually covered. And we have, of course, the EF button here, and we'll get into the compare button shortly. If a carrier offers accidental in a plan, or if you want to see the annual rate, um, you can hit the expand arrow here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter some basic underwriting information. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm taking this off. The reason I do that is that money does not buy life insurance, but your health does. So in my personal opinion, it doesn't matter if the client wants 35000 and you know what their budget is. First thing we have to do is figure out what they qualify for. So when you leave these fields blank, we'll automatically run final expense at 10000 and we'll automatically run term at 100000 So every carrier will show. Now we'll put in a medication, spironolactone. So we only show the accepted uses for medications, and that can be filtered down further by carrier on our back end. Uh, but for example, if you put in Dinepazil, we're not going to show you confusion, we're going to show you um, Alzheimer's. But in this case, spironolactone will say is taken for blood pressure. First fill, let's say 2018. And we can pop it in as easy as that. Now, what you'll notice is there's a red dot on a few of the carrier tiles here. So what that indicates is sometimes, based on data points that we have, based on what the carriers have told us, or a variety of other reasons, uh, there's something that we can't necessarily quantify into a preferred standard modifier, whatever the carrier's indication is, but we want to let you know that, hey, this medication may trigger a referral to an underwriter, it might go graded, uh, or rated, um, so we let you know with the red dot. So whenever you see the red dot, make sure you mouse over it, because that means there's something that we want to tell you. A few other things with our system. It does support combinations, so if we put in gabapentin, we'll say it's for pain. I'm just going to quickly enter these in. And we have metformin for diabetes, we'll say first fill 2016. Now we call these fringe or follow-up questions, so whenever you see these questions, again, there's things that we want to narrow down in the underwriting to make sure you're asking all the relevant questions, so we'll say no to this for now. 
and you can see we'll auto add diabetic neuropathy. Now, American Amicable and some carriers will let this slide. Um, sometimes it won't be picked up on, but in general, it's a good thing to know that diabetic neuropathy is not a health condition. It's simply somebody with diabetes and neuropathy. So gabapentin and nerve pain pill and metformin diabetes. Another name for gabapentin is neurontin, which is a good, uh, you know, we're using our Latin roots there, um, kind of the, the target of the medication is to treat nerve pain. Now we have a number of these different indications in the system. If I was to enter, for example, Coreg for high blood pressure, well, in this case, we have Coreg and spironolactone, that in our system will indicate CHF. Notice every single person on earth taking Coreg and spironolactone have CHF? No. Uh, but it's a pretty good indication that the person has heart problems or something you know, a little bit more serious that you should look into. Uh, additionally, a good uh, example here with furosemide or Lasix, the way that you can know if it's for CHF or not is if they're taking 40 uh, milligrams or less or if they're taking more than 40, generally 80 milligrams a day. Um, so we try to catch you um, or if the client is trying to insist one thing and you know, you're not sure if they're telling the truth or not, the system will help you kind of catch these things as, you know, what we care is how the company will see it. So that's kind of how we build our, our system there. But uh, one more that we'll show here is cancer. So if I type in cancer here, you can see that we call our underwriting system a reverse funnel. So we try to show you as few options as we can, and then we narrow you down the chain of questioning as we go. So these top three options you're probably not going to use too often, but Current, do they currently have cancer? Do they have, have they had cancer in the past? We'll say have they had cancer in the past. Type of cancer, depending on the carriers that you have selected. In this case, we'll say other. Date of last treatment, we'll say 16. Diagnosis, we'll say 15. Have they had cancer more than once? We'll say no. Now, however, if I go back, note that the next question is metastatic. If I answer this yes, It'll ask me the logical follow-up question, have they had recurrent cancer of the same type? So Mutual of Omaha and some other carriers specifically ask about this, and the reason we don't show you it if the first question is answer no, logically you cannot have the same type of cancer more than once if you've never had cancer more than once to begin with. So the important thing with our underwriting system to know is that we will ask you the only questions that are relevant and pertinent to the case as you're putting it in, so that you don't waste any time and you ask the right questions to the client. So we'll say no, have they heard metastatic, we'll say no. And in this case, we're just gonna take off, make this a little bit easier on the system here. So I wanna have some actual options. So let's just say this pretty typical final expense client. So gabapentin, metformin, we'll say they have neuropathy and they had cancer in the past. And we'll say in this case that they're banked for FDFT and they're a non-smoker. So we run the quote. And in this case, a few different things we wanna take a look at. So firstly, if a carrier's decision is rated or modified in any way, we'll show you why. So we have our why reasoning here. And if a carrier is excluded, we'll tell you why. So in this case, why is Transamerica excluded? Well, they've had cancer more than once, so that's a decline. Why is America excluded? Well, they've been treated for uh, neuropathy within two years, that's guaranteed. And also because of the cancer more than once, and then in this case, the commission cut is something like 88%. So the system isn't going to show it. So these are the options that we have on this case. Now I can narrow that down further, you know, what is my commission going to be? Because of course, you know, that's why we work is to make money. We can see the parameters of the plan. And we can make our decision. So in this case, let's say I ran the case and you know, I'm going to go with Moograde. So I'm going to hit compare. And we have our case pushed over, so Moograde, and we have all our information on the right. And we just enter our amount, so 10, 15. So we call it, you can call this whatever you want, the bronze, silver, gold, we just call it quote compare. And at this point, if you're doing telesales, this would be where you present your three options. If you're in person, you know, this is where you like flip your iPad or your device or computer around and say, okay, Mr. Jones, this is the, these are the three options you've been pre-approved for, what works best for you. Let's say he says, oh, that's a pretty good rate. What, what can I actually get with a hundred bucks a month? Okay, 100, compare. And for, actually, that would push us out of, I think 20,000 is the max. So that was a bad example on my end. So let's say we ran it at 17. And okay, now he says, what can I get for 100 bucks a month? So uh, I don't think there's an option there. So in this case, let's say we ran it at 90 bucks. 
And there you go. So for 90 bucks a month, you can get $19,410 of coverage. So this is kind of the close down tool and it's a way to make the sale feel a little bit more official to the client. So you've ran them through the system, you've compared their options, you've asked them these important health questions, taken their medications, and now you're showing them their pre-qualified or their pre-approved options. Now you're at the final step of the sale. This helps to differentiate you from other agents because you're making it feel a lot more official. It feels very real. It's a computer program that you're running them through and it makes them feel ready as in, you know, what do they need to think about? You've already ran them through, you've pre-approved them, it's time to see if they actually get approved, um, you know, when you actually submit the app. When you're ready to submit the app, you just click eApp, and then it'll take you to your login for that carrier. So we do not handle any um, enrollments on the portal or the uh, system itself. And a few more things to note. So firstly, a lot of, uh, we, we get asked the question a lot, you know, if I enter the medication, do I have to enter the health condition? So in this case, uh, or in any case, the answer is never. So if I put in metformin for diabetes, I do not need to go in and enter diabetes as a health condition. Uh, if you have the medication, that's always best. In this case, this person's cancer was 2016, so it's very doubtful they remember what they were taking, so the health condition is fine. But when you have the medication, just try to enter the medication when you're, when you're able to do so. And if we head over to quote uh, drug lookup, this is just a quick way, it's built into the quarter, but you know, if you just want to look up like one medication, just type in Spiriva, COPD, you can look it up, and you can get your carriers that take that medication, or you can enter multiple medications. The health cheat sheet is just, you know, a fancy way of showing those PDFs everybody sends around. The thing with ours, it'll show you every carrier, every product. Um, if I'm to enter, I'll say, AFib. We'll show you our entire back end. So, you know, if diagnosed within a year of decline, we'll type in cancer here. It shows you all those fringe questions that I mentioned. So, you know, cheat sheets always there if you need it. And we didn't spend much time on term today, but it's essentially the same interface as the final expense. So you can enter your face amounts up here. You have your ROP toggle. Um, you can change the term length if you want. You know, if, it, if it's, um, you know, sometimes a carrier is ran by the nearest age, and in this case I entered age 40. Also for this uh, plan, it's going to require a PHI based on the face amount I ran with the age, so we'll let you know that there. So again, always use the red dot indicator. And we'll take off the ROP here. So the carrier offers living benefits. We will list them on the toggle here. So it's always important to look in the agent guide to see the exact parameters, but um, you can pretty quickly and easily look up what the living benefits are with the toggle, or at least the basics of it. And if you ever want to move quotes in between FEX and term, so let's say I ran this case, and obviously this person's probably not going to qualify for much term, but uh, we want to move them over, so I would just hit save. Saves the file in an unreadable extension. I would just go over to term, click load, and I can load that case right over. So one thing to remember with that is when we go back into our files here. So when it saves it, it'll just save it as this unreadable extension with this random format. So <clears throat> you can just rename this to John Jones. And I usually tell people, you know, keep a folder on your desktop or your, you know, your iPad iCloud and just keep the files in there and rename them as you need them if you want to save them because you can always come back to them later. You can save this in whatever CRM you use. Most CRMs allow you, allow you to attach a file, um, and that just saves all the, the health conditions as you have them entered. But again, you can't double click on it to open it, because if you do that, it'll try to, actually wait, no, that's, I renamed it. So if I try to open this just to show you what it looks like, the computer won't know what to do with it. So always when you're loading it back in, you have to click the load, select the file, and hit open. Just remember that. And other than that, that is basically the overview of the system. So if you have any questions while you're using it, you can always send us a message on our live support here. You can send us an email directly at contact at and we are happy to help with anything you might need.